All right, so we here we go, guys. This will be our last set of the day. Uh, final round of four matches to determine who's going to move on to play select in the final. It's going to be TG Corlith against Rebley. And these are two guys that I'm not uh, not really familiar with. So we're going to be kind of learning about these players together. And uh, we're going to be giggling about how tough of a road they're going to have ahead of them in select. Of course, the finals will be played on July the 6th. And those will be against, uh, those will be casted by MLG. And it looks like these are going to be TVT. So our uh, first map will be Metal. And uh, we're going to follow that up with uh, Loser Picks. And as soon as these players are ready, we're going to get it underway. All right. So a Terran versus Terran to determine who plays against the Terran player select in the finals. Uh, Corlith is ready. Rebel is ready. Here we go, guys. This is the final series of the evening TVT. Corlith versus Rebel in the Alienware Arena. Uh, this, this whole event, of course, brought to you by Alienware and E-Rev. Uh, so please uh, thank those sponsors when you pass them on the street. Awesome guys for putting up such a great event. I uh, hope you all are enjoying the games, and I hope you guys are excited for the, uh, for the final. So here we go. Rebel versus Corlith. I've got the Rebel spawning as the red Terran player here on the left-hand side of the screen. Spamming up a storm, 200 APM. Underneath those fingertips, his opponent Corlith not playing with quite the same fervor. Only uh, only rocking about 35 APM thus far. Kind of Axlav-esque. Says, I don't need no stinking spam. Now, uh, we've seen a TVT today already between Select and Spades, and those games were very, very much uh, chess matches. Very eager to see if these players opt for more macro styles or if they're going to do something uh, uh, a little bit different, a little bit more aggressive. Uh, just single uh, single depots going down for each player thus far. Rebel actually opting to wall his ramp, which is an interesting choice. Now, uh, Metalopolis, of course, mirror matches are mirror matches. Uh, both players can build the same stuff, so, I mean, there's not much to say in that regard. But Metalopolis is a very uh, interesting map in that it's, uh, it's, it's symmetrical. It, uh, it doesn't really allow for tons of different attack paths. There are basically ma two main lanes from one side of the map to the other. Uh, when players take their thirds, it does open up uh, the opportunity for a lot of uh, harassment and, and flanking and things of that nature. But uh, until these guys get past two bases, games are going to feel very static, uh, of course, unless something just crazy goes on. Uh, so Rebel to put the racks at the, uh, at the ramp there. And... Uh, instead, opting to go gas racks in his main. So both guys looking like they're doing similar builds, similar worker counts, similar things happening on all counts. And uh, there we go. Now, uh, we've seen a few different uh, openers in terms of what is possible in TVT. Uh, you can always go for uh, add-ons on your barracks and then play biocentric. You can go up to factories. You can use mass mech. We saw some really cute uh, Blue Flame Hellion play out of spades in his games against Select. So there's, uh, there's tons, of, uh, tons of possibility here. And look at that uh, Rebel getting the scout in. He's going to see the one racks and the one gas, and that's all he's going to see. And... Also sending out a Marine just to kind of control the Zelnaga Tower, make sure that he's got uh, got good vision of everything that's going on. And so here we go. Uh, factory now going down from Corleth. And also out of Rebel. So virtually identical builds here. These guys have the same number of units, same number of workers, the same tech structures. 
everything is virtually identical. Uh, although uh, our friend Corleth has somehow managed to e eke out an SCV lead. He's just doing a better job of mashing that S key, I suppose. Second gas down for Rebel. That's going to be the first big difference. Uh, second gas, of course, hinting heavily at some sort of inclination towards heavy tech play. Maybe Banshee. Uh, maybe something else. Uh, Blue Flame Hellions, perhaps. I don't know. Uh, so Tech Lab going down immediately on that factory. Will we see a starport? is the next question. Corleth also opting for the tech lab, but instead of um, getting the second gas, he's going to take an expansion. So this is where the players are going to deviate. A little bit of a marine poke happening here by Rebel, but nothing nothing really coming of it. And a tank on the way. And a, what? Man, these builds are so, so similar. So instead of uh, expanding in his main, uh, Rebel's just going to throw down the low ground expansion. Use that, uh, I guess, use those seconds to innovation. Here we go. Corleth, Blue Flame, going down for some Hellions. So we are going to see some Blue Flame Hellion play out of Corleth. And uh, I guess uh, he's going to be trying to... Uh, Knock, uh, knock some SCVs down, do some economic damage to, to Rebel. Rebel has walled in very nicely, and he also has siege tanks out, so it's going to be kind of hard for these uh, these Hellions to get in and really do anything. Command Center is finished for Corleth. He's going to morph it, morph it into an orbital before he moves it, so... You won't be mining from that extra base for a little while. And uh, Rebel, Viking on the way out. These guys just playing the most standard macro style imaginable. Looks like we are going to see a medevac out. Now this is uh, this is interesting. Uh, Hellion drop will absolutely forego this wall, and it's going to force uh, force Rebel to, uh, I guess, leave units at both bases if he wants to avoid taking any sort of big economic damage. He does have that Viking out. That'll be a good tool in ushering that medevac out of the, out of places, and uh, maybe even a little bit of a push materializing here. A couple tanks moving out at the same time. Uh, Corleth pushing out with some Marines, and these guys j just posturing up a little bit, poking at each other, trying to feel each other out, figuring out where they can um, where they can strike, if at all. And really, really importantly, this medevac is on its way out, and it is it is on a path to be intercepted by this Viking. Oh, no, the Viking does see the medevac, and the Hellions are going to be forced to unload. But the Marines are going to pick off the Viking, and uh, these Blue Flame Hellions could potentially do a lot of damage to that, that group of Marines. But um, instead, it looks like, uh, looks like uh, Corleth is going to prepare his medevac and kind of get ready for... Uh, take two at this sort of a drop play. Rebel, with a lot of units out here in an awkward position, I feel like his tanks are sort of high and dry over here at the third base, and Corleth doesn't seem to realize that they're there. Rebel is going to push down and challenge the natural of his opponent, and while this is happening, uh, Corleth is way out of position. Marines are being caught in transit by these Blue Flame Hellions, and these Hellions are going to make their way into the natural. But while this is happening, a lot of damage being dealt on the natural of Corleth. Rebel might even snipe this command center. It doesn't look like Corleth has siege mode completed, uh, and uh, Marines just being microed backwards. Tanks doing a lot of damage, and those Hellions are not being controlled very well. They're all going to go down. Uh, but, uh, oh, no, not all of them, but the damage has absolutely been dealt. Uh, or ha well, who? Well, let's. Hmm. Maybe I'm speaking too bluntly. Rebel lost all of his stuff and only forced the command center to lift. Whereas Corleth salvaged basically all of his SCVs. He only lost, or he lost nine workers, but he's been pumping SCVs hard, and he's very, he's just barely behind. So I feel like um, maybe that wasn't the best trade for Rebel, as Corleth is pushing out across the map. It looks like he wants to make a make something happen here. What has happened to the Hellions is what I want to know. Yeah, they're still there. All right, so here we go. Coral is going to push in onto the natural, and a couple Marines are going to go down almost immediately. 
Uh, Marines are going to focus down a siege tank before being forced to back up. Oh, being lifted up into the medevac. Very nice. And uh, just cute control. Absolutely. Uh, the, the SCVs are repairing that siege tank, but so many SCVs are going to go down here. And uh, Corlith going to be content to back off now that he's kind of created a lead for himself. 40 SCVs to 34 on this tank. Just kind of going to go back home. Uh, Rebel has done a nice job of, of sort of averting catastrophic losses, and he's also secured a third command center. So he will have an extra orbital at his disposal, and he'll have a third base before long. And Corlith uh, does not appear like he has any inclination towards adding a third, at least not in the near future. He's got tons of production down, and he is just macroing like a champion. You can see uh, four Marines being pumped out at a time, siege tanks coming out, upgrades going down. Lots of gases being mined, and man, that is a lot of production. And on the uh, on Rebel side of the map, we can see that there's not quite the same amount of production. The question I have really, really of Corlith is, can he sustain this production? As he does go ahead and throw down his third base in the third, so I guess he feels like he's got enough map control to 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 posture up and to sit back and to, and to stay safe. And Rebel once again looks like he wants to push out onto the map. And uh, these guys just kind of feeling each other out, taking their time, playing it slow, Corliss being very careful. As he is going to make his way into the center of the map. And these guys basically just playing the positional game. And look at this. I really like this choice by Rebel. He's going to move up and take the gold base. Uh, he is certainly a little bit behind. But uh, by moving over to this gold base, he's putting the pressure on his opponent indirectly. He's saying, all right, Corlith, I'm going to take this expansion. And it's up to you to deny it. And if you don't, I'm going to have way, way more stuff than you in just a little while. And you're going to be in big trouble. Um... And so we can see mules coming down. Rebel just kind of controlling this center of the map, and I, I have to wonder: Does Corlith even know? You know, he has no idea that this uh, that this base has been taken. He's probably assuming that uh, Rebel has expanded up to the top of the map, and we can see that he has loaded up a drop, and he's sending that around. Where is that guy going? Let's follow the waypoints. Uh, so he's going to go over here to wherever Rebel's fourth would be, and I guess he'll pick it up again uh, in a little while. Meanwhile, the supplies are very, very narrow, and Rebel having this gold base is going to make things so, so tough for uh, for Corlith. Now, he is blocking a couple of the uh, mineral patches. Um, I'm not sure if... No, SCVs don't go through sieged tanks. They're treated like a structure, not like a like a unit. That's interesting. Uh, anyway, uh, Corlith does look like he finally wants to posture up a little bit. Maybe he's thinking about taking his own gold base. You can see the mineral spiking up very high here from Rebel as he even hit a supply block. And here's the drop from Corlith. He's like, wait a second. There's no expansion here. This, 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 has he taken the gold? And sh I mean, I, surely he'll scan or something. He, oh, he's gonna go poke up into this Zelnaga tower, and that will um, that will tell the tale for sure. And look at this excellent positioning here for Rebel, uh, controlling this high ground, making it so that uh, so Corlith, Corlith, Corlith. Oh my goodness, that's hard to say. Can't just push up onto the tower and and control it and shell this expansion. And man. Uh, the the income uh, for uh, for Rebel just absolutely huge. Uh, as these mules come down, you're going to see it spike up even higher. He's going to be bringing in something like 2.2k minerals per minute, something crazy like that, and uh, certainly beats the uh, 1.6, 1.7k of his opponent. Uh, Corlith does want to make an attack happen. He's going to stem some Marines and run up, and I'm not sure that I like this choice. He uh, he does kill a couple of siege tanks, and he does have a decent position here on this low ground, but Rebel able to just use the high ground to his advantage and, and hold fairly easily, it seems. Uh, if we look on the units tab, we can see uh, the tank numbers for Rebel are quite low, and critically, his macro has slipped a great deal. He's taken this gold base, but he hasn't really added the production to offset the extra income, and he's sitting here with like 2.2k minerals, and uh, he's just he's he's queuing up. Well, he's not even double queuing units. He's just not spending his money, 
Uh, he needs to throw down probably like six or seven barracks, to be completely honest, and uh, and just allow the uh, added production. Oh, no, and he's given up the Zelnaga Tower, and that's going to deny any more mining from that gold base. And now Rebel forced to give up that gold base. And uh, this game absolutely going to move into the uh, the later stages as this uh, this map has essentially been cut in half. Look at this. Rebel expanding down here to uh, Corlith's fifth. That's an interesting choice. And one that's certainly not likely to be scouted anytime soon. Rebel's still having a hard time spending his, num his money. Corlith's just macroing better and sitting with a, with a much higher supply than his opponent, completely denying that gold base. And it uh, looks like I missed something up here. But... Um, Uh, ba -bum -bum. I, I don't think there was ever an expansion there, but certainly there was a fight. Still, 186 supply for Corlith against the 160 of his opponent. And uh, Rebel really badly wants to mine here, but he just can't really do anything about these, these uh, siege tanks on the Zalnaga Tower. And uh, what's going on with... Ah, the second tower has been shelled as well, so the geyser is being focused down. And, uh, and Coral is just doing an excellent job of just controlling the map. He's taking his own gold base now, and Rebel's not going to be able to do anything about that. And Coral is maxed, so he's in a position to start pushing. He needs to start making trades happen. And, uh, you know, in spite of the fact that it's a maxed army against a 160 supply army, it's not easy to... Um, look at this Rebel going to try... try, try he's tr finally going to try to make something happen. He's loaded up a big drop... Now, with this drop being loaded up, he's basically giving up all of his ability to hold this gold base. I feel like, I feel like Corlith push on it. Uh, instead, he's uh, he's sending all of his units back home because he doesn't want to lose his main. But a big drop on the production. A siege tank is going to go down, and these marines are going to show up late to the party, and uh, they're going to just get picked apart by the superior marine marauder numbers. This is a great drop here out of Rebel, and uh, these marauders just doing huge amounts of damage. Uh, the marines. Might be able to clean this up. No, there's just too many medevacs uh, getting too much healing done. And now the entire infrastructure of Corlith is under fire. Uh, he's going to lose a uh, factory and a couple of barracks for sure before the entire army of Corlith is able to get back there and help kind of deal with it. Uh, still, though, Corlith maintaining control of these towers. Rebel really needs to use this as an opportunity to push somewhere else and perhaps maybe deny an expansion or even... Um, Wow, look at all these barracks going down from Corlo. This is this is the kind of thing that Rebel needed to do when he took the gold base so long ago. Such production uh, being opened up here. And uh, I guess he needs it to offset the losses he just took. But at the same time, Corlo still enjoys a very healthy supply lead. And uh, until... Um, until... Uh, until something is done to kind of check his production, I think he's going to maintain that supply lead. Finally, uh, Rebel able to d deny these siege tanks here on these towers, so he'll be able to maybe start mining again in this gold base. But uh, still, uh, Cor Corlith does have a vice grip on that southern tower. And oh man, immediately, Corlith retakes that tower control and picks off a couple siege tanks. And I, I feel like uh, all Corlith really has to do is initiate one really good attack to kind of uh, to, to button up this game. These Marines are going to move up to the top of the map and knock out this, uh, I guess, 12 o'clock natural expansion. Rebel not even going to try to save it. He's just going to let it go. And these same Marines are going to move over to the uh, to the natural third base of Rebel, but there's a planetary there. It's going to be hard for them to, uh, to do anything about that. And, whoa, careful, Marines. And, uh, yep, they're going to get, uh, they're going to get pinched off by the army of, uh, of Rebel. But um, still, I, I have to feel like Coral is playing the better game here. He's, he's controlling the map better. He's able to mine from his gold base. And uh, he's got tons and tons of production. Rebel finally managing to max out, getting his macro under control at last. And uh, now it's just going to come down to see you know, which one of these players can, uh, can really make something, uh, can make something happen here. Which one of these guys is going gonna, is gonna to force something to materialize? Rebel just controlling the center of the map and uh, trying to make it so he can mine from this gold once again, but Corlith's just kind of all over the place. 
uh, continuing to cut off the top half of the map, not allowing any extra expansions. Another big drop coming here from Rebel. And he's showing a, oh no, losing one, two dropships before they can even unload. And a third is going to go down with the Marine still inside. So uh, not, <laughs> not a good trade there. Uh, Rebel might force a cancellation on this command center, but in the meantime, he's going to lose his natural third base. He's still not able to mine from this gold, and Corliss just cutting the map in half, doing a huge amount of damage here. And uh, I feel like uh, this could be the beginning of the end. There's still a huge army that Corliss is going to have to uh, uh, attend to, but, um, but he's slowly choking out his opponent, uh, certainly. And uh, the army of Rebel try looks like it's trying to push up around the back here. Wants to take up a flanking position behind these siege tanks. It'll be kind of difficult, though. There are a lot of tanks here and quite a bit of bio as well. And Corliss is also in a good position to reinforce should he choose to do so. Rebel looks like he's trying to decide if he wants to engage this or not. And he does run up. Tanks are focus firing the command center, though, so that's not a good trade. Um, oh, wow. Look at these Marines doing such huge damage. What are the upgrades? It's 3-3 three, three Marines against... Uh, what is the bio upgrades for... Uh, for Rebel, that that fight did not look like it should have gone that way. Uh, the three three Marines. <laughs> where is there any bio against one one bio from Rebel? So uh, this is only making matters, I guess, more and more dire as Rebel basically being forced to chain repair this command center, and it's just bleeding him dry of minerals, as uh, he's not able to mine this gold base. He's being he's being denied at the third base. He's dumping tons of resources into repairing that command center and more units are just sweeping across the map for Corliss. He's going to knock out a couple more siege tanks as well as some medevacs it looks like. And uh, finally I think uh, Rebel might be able to secure this uh, secure this third base but um, he's, he's definitely been taking lots and lots of damage. It looks like some medevacs are going to go down here for Corliss. Uh, and, and Corliss just getting the better of all these exchanges. If you look at the units loss tab uh, the resources lost by Rebel far, far outweigh the resources lost by Corlith. And look at this, still not able to mine. Uh, knocking out another siege tank there at the gold base. And just definitely a stalemate if ever there has been one. And the production of... Um, the production of... Of Corlith is just out of this world. He's throwing out a lot of command centers. He's no doubt going to start sacking SCVs. If we look on the units tab, we can see that... Uh, he is sitting on about 67 SCVs, and he would love nothing more than to free up 67 supply for something like, I don't know, battle cruisers or even just more bio and tanks. And once again, Rebel trying to re-expand up to the top of the map. Uh, he's essentially working on one base. Oh, big push. No, that's not a push. Those are SCVs. And they're just being sacrificed for the greater good. So that'll free up a, a lot more supply for army. Look at this huge drop up here at the top of the map. I feel like um, Coral is probably want to want to wait for this ex uh, this other command center to finish. This uh, this base is going to fall to tank fire, and all these SCVs are going to go down as well. They're not going to get anywhere. Rebel has moved up to the base of this cliff, and he's going to force these units back a bit. But I just I feel like he's just he's slowly losing more and more stuff as uh, as Coral is just making better trades left and right. On the units lost tab again, we can see almost a 10,000 resource disparity in the in the resources in the in the units lost. Uh, upgrades are finally starting to catch up here for Rebel, but you can still see uh, the power of three three Marines as they uh, as they just trade so effectively with um, with the with the with the bio of uh, of Rebel. And um, man, the macro here from Corlith is just out of this world, producing like a million marines at a time and uh, like what is that number he's, he's, he's eight right now but he's only using a, a fraction of his barracks a little drop here into the main uh, not going to really do a whole lot Corlith once again looks like he wants to push up through the center of the map and gold base will finally fall it hasn't really been doing anything for for ages and again, 3-3 three, three Marines against 2-2 two, two Marines is always going to favor the better upgraded units. Uh, finally, Rebels starting to bleed out. Down below 100 supply. Corliss still sitting comfortably over 170. Uh, this, uh, this fourth base of Rebel is going to fall as he's starting to mine out his third. 
He does still have a little bit of a bank saved up, but I just don't feel like there's really anything he can do here as, uh, <laughs> as Corlith has just expanded everywhere. He's just dropping mules like a madman. His economy is ridiculous. 4,000 minerals per minute. Continuing to deny the, uh, the resources and the expansion of Rebel. And with this fourth base falling, I have to feel like Rebel will be GGing soon. It's, a, it's 200 supply to 65. And uh, across come the Marines and the siege tanks. This will no doubt be the, the killing blow, as these are the only units that remain for Rebel. And they're going to be completely pinched off. Surrounded and destroyed. 190 supply to 30. GG well played. And Corlith convincingly takes game number one. All right, the map has been chosen. It will be Taldarim Altar and MLG Taldarim Altar. Get Rebel in here. Get Corlith in here from Arena One. Where is Corlith? He is right here. Get our observer in here, and we will be ready 